Hey everyone, this is Heather from the future, and I just want you to know that if you are feeling anxious today, this is not the episode for you to watch, because my anxiety was running high when I recorded, but I think that that's a true sign of what we're going through, so I decided to leave it. I just wanted to give you a tri trigger warning before you went in. So if you stay to watch, you are so very welcome and thank you for being here. And if you don't, I totally get it. And I will see you next week. Welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. I'm your host, Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon. Today is Monday, the 23rd of March, 2020, and this is episode 11. How's it going? Are you finding your new normal? We are trying to find our new normal. I think we're getting there. This is an interesting time to be alive in. Um, I never ever wanted to be someone who lived through a moment in history, but now I am. So, you know, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Um, all of the kids are home, but they have been banished. So hopefully they will stay banished. I will get this recording done. I'm feeling very frantic. So let's just start out. So you know I'm feeling frantic, um, but I'm trying not to. I am not good at when things are not working out the way they're supposed to. Like new normals are really hard for me, but I'm working on it. So administrative things. I have a knit along going on right now that is the Keep Calm and Shine Bright knit along. It is to make a yarn hug. And every day this week I will have a little video. Well, every day now through Thursday I will have a little video or two about um, kind of like a knit along with me sort of deal. And then a couple tutorials. So hopefully that will be that will be useful for some people, especially those of us staying home with um, nothing to do, kind of. I have plenty to do. There's tons to do, but I don't know. A new project for me this weekend worked really, really well for keeping me calm. And now that I'm done recording all of that, I'm starting to feel the, the flutter. So I just need to calm down. I'm gonna actually going to take a drink and a deep breath, and I'll be back with you in a second. The problem is, is I started out this podcast asking about your new normal, which I should not have done. I should have saved that to the end and not even thought about it. Because you know what? We're doing great. We're healthy. We are making things work as best we can. There have been minimal fights this week. We're doing great. That's a much better foot to start off on. I finished a couple things, some samples for Joanne. So these are a class that may or may not run, who knows, because Joanne um, has very limited hours right now, last I heard, and all of the classes are canceled until further notice. So <laughs> this class may or may not run, but I finished the samples anyway. It's for a coaster. It's granny circles. I think is what the class is called. So I made two of those. There's also a ridged pattern for a, a pillow cover. So, you know, this class may or may not run. It's okay if it doesn't. I'll have a fancy pillow. And for the other store, they just wanted a 12 inch square showing the technique. So I made those. These are made with the loop yarn that comes pre, it's pre-looped. You already have it looped when you get it. The, um, the coasters are made out of cotton, lily sugar and cream, I think. So all of my work's in progress now. I didn't finish anything else. I thought last week going into it that I was going to get so much knitting done and I kind of have but I also kind of haven't because um, there was a day there were two days where I was pretty sick with a stomach thing pretty sure it was anxiety induced because nobody in the house nobody else was sick I didn't eat anything that other people in the house didn't eat I'm pretty sure it was anxiety induced 
And yeah, I slept most of the day on Thursday, probably like 17 hours out of 24, maybe more than that. But I did make some progress on some things. So let's not shortchange. Let's see. Was I finished? I thought I had to cast on. Oh, no. I had to cast on the second of a different sock. So I must have been. Where was I last week with this sock? These are the ribbed socks. I have a stitch marker here that may have been the progress from last week. Was this last week to this, like the beginning of this week? I don't remember. I don't remember, but I made all of this progress and I'm pretty sure I just put this in. I don't think I had finished the first sock. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm going to let it go. I am on the second sock. I am getting close to the, the heel. So let's look at it. Oh yeah. Less than an inch until I start the, um, the pre heel rounds. So I could, I'm, I'm going to make that a goal today. I will get to the heel of this sock today. It's an easy goal, totally doable. I can manage that. The yarn that I'm using for these socks is a sport weight yarn. It is regular design line six in color 03658. These are socks for my boyfriend. He, um, he wears pretty much the same size so sock as I do. So these are, you know, my size socks. And what else about them? It's ribbing. Uh, last week I told you that I did 65 rounds for this portion right here. I remember that. Um, that is incorrect. I only did 40 rounds for here. So I must have been just about here when I was talking to you because I was continuing to work and I had marked it as 65 rounds and then I realized that this portion seemed awfully long so you can kind of tell you can kind of tell that this has um, decreases here this one has decreases down here it's fine I don't care he's going to wear them he probably won't even notice I did not feel like ripping back that many rounds and actually holding these up to each other. I think it's only like, yeah, it's about eight rounds until I start the heel. I can do that today. I'm trying to give myself very attainable goals right now so that I feel good and not stress out. I've also worked on try tying a little bit. The bag and the yarn are fine now. I put it in a different yarn cozy because this one was very convenient. The other one has just made its way back into my little stack of yarn cozies. So try tying. Where was I last week? Where this giant safety pin is. So not a ton of progress, but something. I did some work on it. I also put in just a very little bit of work on trough. So let's see, where am I? But these rounds are really, really big. They're, um, I don't exactly know how many, how many stitches are on the needle. Maybe I'll put it at the bottom if I think about it. So I did like four rounds. Good enough. Four rounds is good enough. I did restart that star sock. So I got this far and this is what my color work floats look like on the inside. Um, I did decide to go with Leading Men Fiber Arts for my other contrasting color, which is kind of why I haven't made a bunch of progress on trough because now it's attached to the star sock and I was more excited about the star sock. So I want to finish that first before I finish trough, I guess. Maybe. Maybe one star sock and then do another section on trough and then reattach the yarn to the star sock. I have put a very little bit of progress. 
on the leg warmers, probably four rounds. This is a modified cresting pattern, which is one of mine. The yarn is Knit Picks Stroll Glimmer in Sapphire Heather. And then this is probably what I put the most concentrated effort into is my Under Armour socks. I finished the leg and uh, the patterning caused it to do a huge color pooling shift at the top, but I'm okay with it. I think it still looks cool. Um, so I did this much of the leg and I started the second one. I have like one one set of pattern repeat sort of in <laughs> just barely past the toe on the second one and I put a little more progress onto that um, the fiber for Karen just a little as I said I did not craft very much this week you know what I did do a ton of this week read so let's talk about my reading I finished Feast of Souls and Beyond Beautiful. Did I finish those since the last? Yes. I was talking about how I was going to finish them last week. I did. Finished those and I finished The Nature Principle in my car. And then I started a new audiobook in my car, but I don't have that in here. I think it's Joyful, maybe, is what it's called. Then I started this. This is The Right Swipe by Alicia Ray. And it's a romance novel. It is super enjoyable. I will be looking up more of her stuff at the library once, you know, the library opens again. I read it over two days. And that is not typical for all of the books I've read this week. Although two of the books I read this week I did read over only two days. So I really liked The Right Swipe. Um, it follows the, the relationship of the beginning of the relationship between a CEO of an app company and a retired football player who um, he has um, some ties to sports medicine not that he practices sports medicine, but his family is involved in sports medicine research, kind of. Kind of. It's really interesting. I also started and finished The Art of Starving, which is a lot. This book is a lot. So, trigger warning, it is about a kid with an eating disorder. And it's pretty awful. He's hospitalized for malnutrition at one point. Um, it talks a lot about calorie counting and things like that. And um, he's also gay, so there's gay boy relations in the book. And yeah, it is a lot. It's really, really heavy. And there were a few times where I just had to put it down and be like, I cannot with this today. Um, I have an eating disorder. I uh, had anorexia, not to the point of hospitalization or anything, but when I was in elementary school, my mom had my teacher send her a letter home every day of what I actually ate during lunch. Not because I was trying not to eat. Um, but because I just didn't think about eating. So, yeah. And then in high school, I struggled with it really bad. And because it was a thing that I could tr control, um, when I felt like a lot of things were out of control. So guess what I've been struggling with again this week? <laughs> um, so, so reading this during that time was maybe not the smartest choice on my part, but it's okay. Um, and I'm doing fine. I am eating. And I'm not eating like 
a restricted diet or anything. Um, I just have to remind myself that it's okay to eat when I'm hungry, which is, you know, it's a fun battle, said nobody ever. So while I was reading that and I needed a break, I read The Right Swipe. Um, I started it one day when this was just becoming too heavy, picked up The Right Swipe, read that in two days, got back to this book. And then once I finished it, I started Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson. And this is um, not my favorite thing that I've read. It is kind of a, there's a lot going on in the book, like point of view wise. So it starts out with Mary Shelley. She is in the, I want to say Chateau, but I don't think it's a Chateau, where she went with Lord Byron and her husband and Lord Byron's um, mistress, who was Mary Shelley's stepsister, and some another poet friend of theirs who was interested in Mary Shelley, but Mary Shelley was married. Very sordid. If you know about literature, then you know about that story. So it starts out there and then it jumps to now-ish and it's all about robotics and AI and um, the, the character now is Rye Shelley and he, he is transgender. Um, Rye is short for Mary, but he think prefers male pronouns. Do I know that for sure? Yes. No? There was a whole conversation about... Now, now I feel like a jerk. Hold on. Okay, so Rye is male presenting um, and had top surgery, but doesn't actually specify whether Rye prefers to be used with male or female pronouns, so they prefer neither. And um, they go by Rye, they're transgender, and they identify as both male and female. <sighs> now I feel like a jerk, but I'm going to try to fix it. So Rye is a reporter and there is a Dr. Stein and there's a Ron Lord who is um, the, I don't know, CEO maybe of a company. He might not be a CEO. He might just be a salesperson. I don't remember. Of a company of sex bots. I don't love it, but it's okay. I picked it up on, on a whim because I liked the cover. So we'll see. We'll see how I feel about it. But over the weekend, there was a readathon with the idea being to read 24 hours in 48. And I knew I wasn't going to make it because I didn't even start until hour 10. And I had other things to do over the weekend, but I decided, ah, maybe I'll finish a book over the weekend, make it a goal to make that part of my weekend. While I was reading this, I got through the first 65 pages, maybe 70, somewhere in there. And I was like, no way am I going to finish this book this weekend. I'm just not that into it. So I went upstairs to my shelf and I grabbed another book that I had from the library is Old Is Time by Liz Braswell. And I wasn't sure if I had read this one or not because I knew that I had picked up several of her books in the past. The, um, the Twisted Tales, I know that I've read the one based on Aladdin. Pretty sure I've read the one based on, based on, based on Sleeping Beauty. 
So now I've read the one on Beauty and the Beast. The problem with loving fairy tales and loving retold fairy tales is that sometimes you forget if you've already read one. So I had not read this one and I devoured it. I It took me um, eight hours, less than eight hours, to read it. It is 400... 70, 484 pages. I am a slow reader. I read slightly faster than the sound of speech because uh, I massively concussed myself when I was in middle school. So I used to be able to read 800 pages in a day, no problem. Um, that is not the case, but that's okay. It's okay. So I read this, really, really liked it. It was an interesting take on Beauty and the Beast. Um, it's a, you can see maybe at the top that it's Disney, so it does follow the Disney storyline, sort of. The whole, the intro um, is word for word the intro to the movie. So frequently there are pieces of dialogue from the movie that are used in the book. It's pretty enjoyable. I also finished listening to The Wizard of Oz on Play Away, which I've never read before or listened to before. Uh, it was okay. I enjoyed it more than I would have enjoyed watching the movie. I know. So many people love that movie, and I do not love that movie. It's okay. I'll watch it if it's on, maybe. No, I won't. I'll knit instead of watching it if it's on. Um, but I do like to listen to classics, so I did that. And then I also started Linger by, um, Maggie Stefvater, Water, I don't know, can't pronounce it still. This is an in-between book. I've read forever recently and then I read Shiver before that and this goes in between them. I didn't know that. Um, I didn't look it up. I just picked up the playaways. So <laughs> I'm listening to Linger and it's out of order but that doesn't really bother me. Um, I'm fine with it. But I'm only like a chapter and a half into it because I listened to it when the girls and I were out for a walk but I would pause it whenever they would talk to me, so I didn't get very far. I just wanted to have something so that it wouldn't be um, in my head too much. So I'm a little nervous after that stack of books that I read this week because I don't have very many books left checked out from the library. Do not worry, I have a collection of books that I purchased back when I used to purchase books um, that I can read. So I'm not going to run out of books to read, but again with that anxiety, I'm feeling a little anxious at how small my library stack is. I do have two other playaways, I think, that I can listen to after this one, and then I have four audiobooks on CD, which I will be listening to um, in my room when I need to get away from my children while I am going through my room and cleaning and organizing. Is this a thing that everybody else is doing? I feel like probably everybody else is doing this since we're stuck in our homes. It's a good time to spring clean anyway. I did my dresser and my part of the closet. I still need to do the bottom of the closet and see what I can do about Patrick's part of the closet because his clothes overflow, but I'm going to try, I'm going to try to organize that. Today I'm going to organize my yarn so that I can pick out some things for, um, some yarn for charity hats and for my blanket square and look at what I have and maybe see what I want to make in April, pick up or make a couple ideas for projects, even though I haven't finished any of my March projects. that's where I am. That's where I'm at in my head right now is like cleaning stuff. So I'm going to clean some things. So I don't know if there's going to be much knitting for next week. 
I'm sure there will be some because I knit every day, but I don't know what kind or what. I'm just trying to uh, keep my stress level as low as possible and not stress out about things that I can't fix because there are a lot of them right now and focus on things like I have the ability to continue with my kids schooling because their teachers are amazing and set up Google Classrooms and so we check in with the teachers every day and the teachers message me on my phone if they're trying to talk to for instance one of the teachers tried to talk to my son um, tried to send him a message wasn't sure if it worked checked in with me we couldn't find the message so then she just relayed the message to me so I relate it to him so all teachers are amazing all the time but teachers right now are even more amazing having to learn new ways to teach their students and I appreciate you all so, so much. I cannot even begin to express how much I appreciate teachers, um, even more so <laughs> than I did two weeks ago when I appreciate them pretty greatly. Um, homeschooling is not a thing that I ever wanted to do with my kids. I am not very good at it. I'm pretty awful at it because my patience level for like trying to teach them new ways to understand things that for me are so basic but for them are kind of tricky I just I'm like just do it just do the thing it's right there all the explanation is right there so yeah I'm not good at it but I'm trying really hard and they're trying really hard and we're trying to make it work so yeah, we take lots of breaks. Not so much Mara. Mara pretty much does everything on her own, but Gabriel and I, we just, he gets frustrated and then I get frustrated that he's getting frustrated and that's just, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good, but okay, that's, that's enough of me blabbering on. I hope that you are finding little moments of joy sprinkled throughout this very, very different time in our lives. And I will see you in about a week. Bye.